Welcome to our final episode on our, on our series on proteins and nucleic acids. And this is going to be a short episode because we're not going to go really deep into the details of what nucleic acids do. Because when we get to chapter 12, which will be our next series of, uh, of screencasts, we're going to talk about how nucleic acids really, really do what they do. So for this episode, you're just going to get the basics of its structure and functions. All right, well, what are um, nucleic acids? Well, they're compounds that contain four, or make that five different elements. And you just remember chomp, not chomp, but chomp. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. It's the only ones you're going to find in these guys. Now, they have a couple of different functions. They are involved in heredity. That would be DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. They're also involved in protein synthesis. This would be DNA and its cousin, RNA, ribonucleic acid. Uh, basically, DNA has the instructions for making proteins, and RNA is going to be used to help make the proteins. But that's chapter 12 stuff. And then we also have a nucleic acid type molecule that's used as an energy transfer molecule, and this one is called ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. We'll show you a picture of that in just a little bit. This is how your body will transfer energy from one molecule to another, and it's going to use ATP for that. What is the monomer of a nucleic acid? It's called a nucleotide. And a nucleotide has three parts. A five-carbon sugar. It's either going to be ribose or deoxyribose, depending if it's RNA or DNA. It's going to have a phosphate group, which will have phosphorus in it. And then it's going to have a nitrogenous base. And this is going to be, you know, a base would be like have a pH of above 7. And it's going to have a lot of nitrogen in it. Hence the name nitrogenous base. Okay. So let's look at the five, car five carbon sugar in detail. Okay, the five carbon sugar is going to be in the shape of a pentagon. And each corner is going to represent a carbon. So I'm going to draw this over here. Put it in a little better spot. All right. Now these carbons have names. This corner right here, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. And this is actually right here an oxygen molecule. So the fifth carbon is sticking up over here. Think of like a house with a chimney coming off of it. Okay, we have a phosphate group. And so you got to put a little P at the top of your chimney. And then we have a nitrogenous base. And think of baseball. We're going to put the base on the first carbon. So think of a first base. Okay, this is your shape of a nucleic acid. Sugar, phosphate, base. Put an S in here for a sugar. And that's either going to be ribose or deoxyribose, depending if you're in DNA or RNA. So ribose for RNA, deoxyribose for DNA. All right, believe it or not, somebody has the ability to draw a better picture than I do. And here's your basic nucleotide structure. There's your five carbon sugar. One, two, three, four, and then the fifth carbon's right up in here. That's going to be an oxygen molecule right at that point. Here's your nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base either have two rings, as you can see in this picture right here, or they're going to only have one ring. And we'll learn more, de about, no more details about that later. And then we have a phosphate group. And we represent with a P. Okay, so here's ATP. Remember I talked about earlier, there was this one nucleic acid or nucleotide-like thing that's used in transferring energy from one molecule to another? And that's ATP right here. It kind of looks like an RNA nucleotide. See, here we have ribose. So if we are going to put a letter in there, that would be R for that sugar. And here's a nitrogenous base. This base is called adenine. But we have not one, but we have two, three phosphate bonds, or phosphate groups. So these bonds right there between these two phosphates, that's where the energy is stored. And these are called high-energy 
phosphate bonds. I'm just going to say high energy bonds here. Okay, so if we pop off that bond, energy is released. And if we pop off this one, more energy is released. So this little tiny molecule is going to transfer energy from, from one chemical reaction to another by adding a phosphate or taking away a phosphate. That's how energy is moved from one molecule to another in your body. All right, that's going to wrap up this episode. I told you it's going to be very short. Uh, we didn't remember we didn't have to go over nucleic acids too deep because we're going to do that in another chapter. All right, so this will finish up our three-part episodes on proteins and nucleic acids. Uh, make sure you watch these maybe a couple times because we do have a large test coming up in about a week. All right, until our next series on enzymes and our chapter two review. We'll see you next time.